Shut up and sit down. Greetings, fellow travelers. Oblix here, coming at you today from Project Ozone Light. How y'all doing today? So, last time in that tower back there behind us, we made a big old mob farm to get all the goodies. Let's get suited back up and this go around. Well, what I want to do today, not because we need it, but just because we can, I want to build ore duplication. Now, we can do duplication with uh, that enrichment factory, or that pulverizer, or that sag mill. So, I mean, you know, we have put one ore in, get two ores out, and that's okay. But uh, I, I want to go to the extreme with this. I want to take it all the way up. And with mechanism, we have the ability to put one ore in. So one regular old ore ingot, or ore block like copper or iron, osmium, tin, these guys all right here. And get five ingots out for every one we put in. Yeah, five. Or syncofication, I don't know what the phrase would be. Pentification, maybe, something. But we're going to work on that today. Now, the first thing we need is a thermal evaporation chamber. Boy, that's a big phrase, isn't it? All it means is it takes water and turns it into something else. So we're going to start with these thermal evaporation blocks. These guys right here, we're going to need a bunch of them. And we need to build them in a 4x4, four four, and it does have to be a 4x4. Four four. Now you can go up to 18 blocks tall. And the bottom has to be complete, but then you just do the sides from there on out. Just like this. Easy peasy. Now if we use our uber wand here, it'll make short work of this. Just line up on it, and up we go. All right. So now you see we're a little bit short, and that's by design. Because we still need to put in our valves and our controllers. You're going to need at least two valves. You can have more, but you need at least two, and these act as both input and output, and you need a controller. So I'm going to come put the controller right here where it's going to be nice and easy to see. In the old days it had to be way up there, but now we can put it pretty much anywhere. And I think we're going to do the valves down on the bottom, because I want to do the bulk of the chemical... There's a, a whole bunch of chemical processing that has to happen before we can get to the ingot processing. And I want to do the ingot processing on top, but I want to do the chemical processing down here. So I've got some water down here. We're going to have to pipe water into this bad boy. So I think we're going to do it maybe right there. Boom. Yeah, that'll work for me. And that what this is going to do is pipe water inside it's going to use heat to turn that water into brine. And I think we're just going to pipe the brine out. I think we'll do our chemical processing over here. So we'll pull the brine out right there. So let's pop on up. I may want to put a little hatch over here while we're working. Uh, but that gave us a few more blocks. And we want to put them in that pattern there. Now, if you don't want to use 
uh, well, if you just want to use the, this chamber as is, you can fill these four blocks in at a height of 18 and it will work. See, if I knock this top layer off, it we'll get some red sparkles. Let's see, we got just got them and this thing is active. So it's, it's ready to start working. Um, but you notice it's only a height of 17. You can build this as tall or short as you want, but no taller than 18 blocks high. So I want to go the full 18, and I want to use some additional heating sources, meaning these solar tower or solar panels. It has to be the advanced ones, and you have you can use one, two, three, or four. So anyone, you, like if I only wanted to use two, I would need to fill in these two blocks right there with the thermal evaporation blocks. But I want to use all four, so I'm going to fill in all four corners like so. And I should get the red sparkles again. There we go. So now this thing will register as an 18 block tall thermal evaporation plant. And because we're using the solar panels, during the daytime this will actually heat up more than it would without the solar panels. And the hotter it gets, the faster it produces brine. Now, if we look at our journey map, you can see we're in a desert. That also helps. The hotter the, the environment, the faster this thing will heat up. This will get up to about a thousand or so degrees uh, when it's all said and done with. It's it's going to take a while because we are at nighttime, but eventually it will get up in there. Uh, so now let's get some water going. And I want to pull out, and I've pre-made all the machines just to make life uh, a little easier because it is quite a bit of crafting to get these guys and we want hmm let's go ahead and put the I'm going to use these cryo stabilized flux ducts because they hold the most power so I'm going to put these right here so we can put our pumps like so. And actually, let me get in here so I can place this pump like so. Now I have gone ahead and upgraded all of these. So speed and energy. And you will see most of them will have liquids in them. I did completely build this setup before just to test to make sure it did work well in this pack. Um, there are some packs that this does not work so good in. Uh, reason being is oh, some servers use things like sponge and stuff like that that um, tends to cause mechanism some issues. Uh, hi Enderman, how you doing? Go away. Nobody likes you. You're ugly and your mama dresses you funny. So I did build this out just to make sure it did work in this pack before I spent the time to do it on video. So bear with me on that one. Now we're gonna need some mechanical pipe to uh, run up here. Now I did build it all, I built the entire thing up there, but we're not gonna build it up there this time. So it will be a little bit different. So some of this will be on the fly. There we go. Now, if we will give these guys some go go juice, they will start producing lots of water. Uh, let's see, our input pipe is over there, our duct. So, I guess we want to. Another Enderman's all agitated. I gotta put a 
obelisk down here to make these guys go away. I think that is going to be coming up a high priority. Because they sure are getting on my daggum nerves. Now the reason I'm going with these is because they, they transport an infinite amount of RF. Oh, dude. Go away. Sheesh. You guys are seriously obnoxious. All right, he is producing another one. Really? Good gravy. All right, you know what? These guys got to go. I've had it with them. Enough is enough. Tormented Enderman head. Yeah. Uh, so water bottles, basic capacitor, solarium, and an Enderman head. There we go. Version obelisk. Now, you get my soul vial forever. you. You know what? I will move this. Because our mob farm is right there, I will move this over here. Just to make sure we're not interfering with our mob farm. And slap an evolved enderman in there. Look at the range. Almost the whole thing. I think maybe a double capacitor is in order. Let's just make sure it doesn't hit the mob farm. I think we'll be okay, but... Ooh, it does clip the edge. Oh, we're good, we're good. Look at that, look at that. Perfection. So that's going to get rid of all those nasty Endermen. Now the ones that are already there are going to stay but no new ones will appear. All right, so we got our water. Now let's check on our brine production. We can see it's already up to almost 500 degrees and it's full on brine. So it has produced brine and you get this kind of cool, you see the liquid down in there effect. That's pretty neat. So now, I like to pipe the brine out, and it is still a liquid. And I like to pipe it out into a drum. So we have lots of extra. There we go. Now. There's our configurator. Oops, I had it on wrench mode. There we go. You can see it's slowly starting to fill up this uh, ultimate mechanical pipe. The bucket, the drum's already full, so. Uh, 65,000 buckets of brine in that bucket right there, or in that drum right there. But yeah, it'll slowly fill up this this guy. Uh, in mechanism, the pipes do hold liquid, so. All right, so as we can see, the temperature has climbed up to almost 900 degrees, and we're full of brine and water. Excellent. So now the next item on the list is an electrolytic separator. So, 
We need one of these guys. I'm going to go ahead and grab them both in case I get the wrong one. Because remember, these guys already have fluids in them. Uh, let's see. That is the wrong one. We want this guy, I believe. Yes. So we're going to input brine and we're going to output sodium and chlorine. So let's take this guy down here. Now this is part of the, uh, like we were talking, the chemical uh, part as opposed to the ore part. Now, how do I want to do power down here? Most of these machines are easy to power from the bottom. But that would mean having to run a bunch of pipes, you know, kind of like that all over the place. I mean, I'm going to have to run them all over the place anyway, but... Could I loop around the back of this thing, maybe? Or do I loop around the front of this thing, maybe? Or do I just come across the top? I don't know. end of the day, I want this guy about right there. And we'll do some cables here, and that's going to put sodium off this way and chlorine off this way out of that port. That would mean power back here. Boy, that's going to be an ugly mess. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. I guess I'll go with bringing this duct over. And down. Like I so. Now let's get some more duct. Do this, boom, he gets power. And I can actually, don't need that wand anymore. We can wrench that guy off, tear out that guy, pop him under like a soap. Pop him in like a so. There, that'll work. And there we go. So he's getting power, and we're inputting brine and we're outputting sodium and chlorine. So, excellent. Now we want a chemical infuser. the crystallizer there we go infuser now there's three of these guys as part of this puzzle so in this one we want to input chlorine and we want to output hydrogen chloride so let's see if we can find the right one there's our hydrogen chloride so we're inputting chlorine and hydrogen and we're getting hydrogen chloride out so Chlorine's coming out this side. So we want to get the chlorine into here. Hmm. Boo, 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 boo. I think we will go here, maybe. Actually, I think we'll just do this. And we're going to output there. So the chlorine from here, we want to pipe to there. So we need 
get some pressurized tubes. take all of our chlorine to fill up the tube. Excellent. If I actually turn this to dumping excess on the sodium, it'll start producing uh, more chlorine. You see to fill up the, the tube there. Now we need to feed this guy some hydrogen. Now to get hydrogen is just simply water run through an electrolytic separator. So here's our other electrolytic separator, if you remember. And we're feeding in water and we're getting hydrogen and oxygen out. And we will use both at the end of the day. So we want that input to be there. So we'll just come off of this pipe here. We can take out that hydrogen and just go boom. Now that's not even the right pipe. What are you doing, Oblix? Put the right pipe on there. There we go. Now we gotta feed this guy water. We get to get water over here from here. So we're just going to swing this guy around like so. And I'm actually going to come in from the top because we are going to need to get that oxygen out eventually. So I want to leave some room for pipes. There we go. Excellent. So again, if we dump the excess here, it will start producing enough to fill up that pipe. So we can just make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do. Awesome. So with chlorine and hydrogen, we get hydrogen chloride. Now we need a chemical injection chamber. Now this guy has kind of a special purpose. Not the dissolution chamber, the injection chamber, this guy. Now, oops, that's the one we're going to use later down the road. You need two of these guys. You need this one. Because he takes a gas, which will show up right here and he mixes it with a solid, in this case gunpowder, to produce his item. He's, so he's going to take the hydrogen chloride in the form of gas, and he's going to be right here in the gunpowder, and it's going to output sulfur dust. So that's why we needed the mob farm first. And I think we're going to go... Hmm... He's going to need the output of this guy. I think we're just going to go right there. But like I saw. Nope, we can't do that because these two will connect and we don't want those two to connect. So. Almost thinking just take this one out like that and then break that connection and make that connection and then we put them right there yeah you have to be real careful you don't want to put uh, if I put another pipe here if I wanted it to carry something different they're going to connect in the the gases are going to mix and you don't want that. 
So bring that guy right up there, like a so. So we can get rid of those for a while. And there we go, hydrogen chloride. So we're taking this and we need to feed in gunpowder as well. So we could feed it in the back, back here, or the side, or the top, doesn't really matter. It just matters that we feed it, because he is a hungry beast. Now I think I have in my inventory a drawer. Oh, I thought I had a drawer. Ah, I moved it over here. So this one's got 18,000 gunpowder in it. We will want to eventually replace that with a an ender chest that goes back over to our mob farm that collects the uh, gunpowder. And we'll just ender chest the gunpowder over here. So it just const has a constant flow. But for the time being, I'm going to slap this guy on here. And I'll switch over to the ender chest at a later date. Hmm, yeah, okay. We only need one of these. Oh, but you know what? I don't think these connect to those very well. I don't think they connect to the drawers really well. I think these work better. Ah! I'm trying to fly and do this is not easy. Go extract always insert. Yeah, there we go. He's getting more gunpowder, and it doesn't have to flow in super fast. This is in a, a super quick process. So there we go. Now we want to output. Uh, that sulfur dust. into a chemical oxidizer. So we got the sulfur dust, we want to output it to a chemical oxidizer. There we go. That's kind of a cool looking machine with a little split in there. It's going to take the sulfur dust and it's going to turn it into sulfur dioxide. So you see here it's going to turn it back into a liquid sulfur dioxide. Uh, this should be configured, right? Let's see. Yeah, output. It's good. It's good. Okay. Now we need to turn this sulfur dioxide. So we had sulfur. We've turned it into sulfur dioxide. Now we need to turn it into sulfur trioxide. We're going to need a chemical infuser. I think we already have here. Is that the right one? Nope. That one? Yep. All right, so we're going to take oxygen and sulfur dioxide to make sulfur trioxide. And that's where we're going to use the other side of this guy, producing that oxygen right there. So we need to feed that oxygen onto this side of the unit, into that port. And then we need to feed this guy onto this side. So just a quick bap right there. And you'll start to see the color showing up. Now we need to get this... 
And I think I'm going to go around the back side here so they don't connect. Ooh, that's going to be a problem because I think we need this output right here. Hmm. That no bueno. That no bueno. Okay, yeah, I don't think we need that. It's a pretty complex machine, and keeping it all straight in your head is uh, nigh impossible. I do have a cheat sheet. Uh, I will put in the down yonder. It will help you if you decide you want to build one of these things. It's actually just the cheat sheet from Aiden Brady himself, the guy who wrote the mod. So uh, you can take it to the bank. It's the right way. So we're going to dump excess on this hydrogen so it will produce oxygen and fill up this pipe. We see it fill slowly turning color. I do love how Mechanism does that. So we're getting our dioxide, we're getting our oxygen, turning it into trioxide, squishing it out the front here. I almost wish I'd push this back one. Hmm, do I want to do that? Do I want to do that? Because I want to take that output and kind of keep everything on this line right here. Yep, yep, yep. I want to do that. So bingo, bingo, bingo. Move you back. There we go. Now. Oh, I can't do that because those will connect. Dang it. Dang it, Bobby. All right, we're gonna have to do that. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme. Give me all my pieces back. Oh, hello. Man, I can't fly all of a sudden. There we go. And there we go. Now we just bring him over. Excellent. Yeah, now I can bring it out the front and it kind of stays in line with the rest of everything else here. All right, so that's our chemical infuser with our sulfur trioxide. Alrighty, folks, that is going to be the end of part one of spaghetti soup, or or quintuplification. Is that a word? I don't know. You tell me. We'll finish up the second half of this in part two in our next episode. So until next time, get out there and make some noise. See ya.